you would think wide receivers, even if the team was down, the program was down, wide receiver should be an automatic at Miami with all the speed in that part of the country. But it was down. Colby Young, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought he was the most consistent guy on the outside, 32 catches, five touchdowns. Tyler Harrell has already produced in this league for, at Louisville, took a pit stop at Alabama last year. Uh, your thoughts about uh, the wide receivers getting better? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, again, new coach at that position group as well. Your offensive coordinator last year and Josh Gaddis was also the wide receivers coach. Um, so it wasn't getting as much attention and love as it should have. Um, you bring in another local guy in Kevin Beard, who was on that championship team over at Miami, um, played with Santana Moss, played with Andre Johnson, played with some of the greatest wide receivers to ever come out of University of Miami and also played on Sundays. So he knows exactly what it looks like to go to the next level. Uh, and he's a guy that's very player relatable. Um, the, the players really love him. Um, they trust him. Um, he, he's someone that is very hands-on as far as a route technician. He's going to be able to bring this wide receiver room to a, a, a new level, in my opinion. This should be the best wide receiver room that we've had in, in some few years. That's not very hard to say, unfortunately, just because the wide receiver room as a whole hasn't really been the best, uh, Mark. Unfortunately, our best wide receivers in years past have been transfer portal guys, whether it's K.J. Osborne, Charleston Rambo, Colby Young last year, right? These are all transfer portal guys. And when you look at this year, you know, you mentioned Colby Young again, which is a transfer guy from last year. And then you brought up Tyler Harrell, who's, again, another transfer portal guy. And, uh, I mean, when you talk about the Shannon Dawson offense, uh, the first thing he talked about was making the home run plays. We're, we're going to have to create big play opportunities and, and throw deep. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to get guys that could create space, create leverage, and, and be able to keep the defense on their toes. And that's why you bring in a guy like Tyler Harrell who has that 424 40-yard uh, dash speed that you're going to want uh, on this football team. Like you mentioned before, transfer from Louisville, then to Alabama, and now to Miami. This is now his third program. You know, three big programs that all produce NFL talent. So in my opinion, at this point, you know, this is a lot of pressure on someone like Tyler Harrell to perform well on and off the football field. Um, because if he wants to play on Sundays, this is kind of his last opportunity to get the job done. Um, and I expect him to do very big things in this offense just because of what I just mentioned on Shannon Dawson and what he, you know, how he creates big plays. Tyler Harrell is going to be the guy to do it, in my opinion, between him and an upcoming freshman and Ray Ray Joseph, who we added in. Those are going to be the two guys that are going to be the, the home run threats. Um, you also brought in a Juco transfer and Shamar Kirk who I expect to not only play this year, but he's going to be able to create a lot of competition with someone like Jacoby George, who needs to step up in this wide receiver room. He's been a local guy, you know, from Plantation that a lot of Miami fans locally have really wanted to, to be that guy for the University of Miami and kind of carry the torch. Um, and, and not only the fans, but the coaches um, have been, you know, kind of, putting emphasis on, on him to perform well this year. Um, and I expect him to do really good things in his offense as well. So between Jacoby George, Colby Young, and Xavier Restrepo, who's coming off an injury this past year, those should be your three guys, um, along with Tyler Harrell and Shamar Kirk Battle and those guys from the transfer portal. And then, like I mentioned before, you got some young up-and-coming guys in Ray Ray Joseph and Robbie Washington who bring a lot of speed and athleticism. Um, you, you should see them in, in special teams as well. And then you also got guys like Isaiah Horton um, and Brashard Smith. Those are two guys that were on the football team last year. That Those two in, in particular, um, I think we brought in a lot of other guys, whether it's the transfer portal guys or the true freshman guys, that are going to create a lot of attention on those two names to perform. Because if they don't, uh, their snaps are going to get taken from these other guys. Will Mallory takes his 42 catches to the NFL to try to uh, make it there. Uh, Jaleel Skinner's a bit of a freak. He mm -hmm. could be a star someday. And, of course, Elijah Royo got off to a good start in his Miami career before he hit some injury issues. Yeah, I mean, the tight end room, um, again, we we changed tight end coaches. Uh, even though the, the, the new tight end coach was someone already on staff, they kind of swapped roles. Uh, we had Coach Field last year as the tight end coach. This year, um, we have our guy, Coach Woodle, 
um, who's now the tight end coach this year, uh, who was in charge of, uh, you know, part of recruiting last year. And now Coach Field has taken over the recruiting role and Coach Woodle is now the tight ends coach. Um, and he's doing a lot of great things on the recruiting trail right now for us. But as far as on the football field, um, he's got a, a nice position group ahead. When you look at the the overall size and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this on the offensive line group here in a little bit as well. But just from a measurable standpoint, um, the tight end room looks the part. You know, all these guys that we're about to name are around that 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", um, you know, 2'15", to 230 range. Um, so what it looks like to have those NFL Sunday tight ends this is exactly what it's starting to look like at Miami you know Miami's always known to being tight in you from all the great tight ends that we've put in in the NFL and it's starting to you know create a, a domino effect from the recruiting aspect of the guys we're bringing in but first and foremost you got Elijah Royal who's coming off an injury last year um, I expect him to be tight in one this year um, he's what six four almost six five uh, going to be that guy that I think is going to be able to create uh, a lot of different um, mismatches on this football field. Uh, you, you lost two tight ends as well on this football team, um, and Dominic Mamorelli and also Khalil Brantley, a Miami Northwestern guy. Both of those guys ended up transferring from the program uh, in the last few months. So you lose you lose those two guys. You bring in McCormick, uh, Oregon transfer, who I believe this is his seventh or eighth year in college football. Uh, but you're going to be bringing him in more for just uh, running blocking opportunities. Uh, so having someone like him will be able to be used in those fronts. But then you got Elijah Royal, Jaleel Skinner, and Riley Williams. Those three in particular are going to be the three-headed monster in the tight end room uh, this year as far as from a playmaking ability and what they're going to be able to do in the passing game. Uh, like I mentioned before, Cam McCormick's going to be more of just a running game guy. Uh, he can obviously catch the football. Uh, but I would look for him more on running opportunities. Uh, but Riley Williams, who's a true freshman, who we ended up getting from IMG um, this past cycle, that's going to be a guy as a true freshman. He already looks the part again. He's someone that I believe is 6'5", 6'6", um, 230 range already. So he already looks the part, can bring a lot to the table. Um, when you talk about a tight end that could stretch the football field and catch in space, that's exactly what you want in a Shannon Dawson offense. And he's going to be a guy that can do that. I feel like Jaleel Skinner is going to be more of a wide receiver than a tight end, in my opinion. Um, I think he needs to be a little bit more sure-handed. I want to see how he perform, performs this year, but I think we got an, other guys, like we mentioned, that could push the room. And it'll give someone like Jackson Carver to really just take a year in this program to really just understand college football, get in the weight room a little bit more. Um, you know, he's another guy that already has the size of measurables but he hasn't played much football. Brad Tejeda is here from Keynes Insight. Get on over there to Keynes Insight. Check out the Keynes coverage. Fall camp is here. It's time to get locked on and locked in on Miami football talk as we head toward game number one against Miami.